Have you ever wondered how you might communicate without cell service? There are a variety of ways to communicate without cell service or Wi-Fi or the internet in general, but today we're gonna focus on one that keeps on popping up, Meshtastic. Meshtastic seems to have really captured a lot of people's attention. I've received thousands of comments and DMs asking, what is it? What is Meshtastic? Well, today in this video, I'm going to break it down so that anybody can understand what Meshtastic is. Make sure to watch the entire video because there are some special features that are gonna take some explanation. But once I explain it, you'll see exactly how powerful it can really be. Also, at the end, I'm gonna tell you about the best equipment that you can get at the best price for a beginner. I'm also gonna give you a couple of other tips on things that you can add on to make your equipment stand out right out of the box. And remember, with Meshtastic, there are no service fees. So once you own the device, you own the technology and you own that means of communication. And this is just the beginning, so make sure you like and subscribe so you can follow along for more information just like this. Let's cut to the chase. Meshtastic is a special radio technology that encompasses some hardware, some software, and some special radio waves. Altogether, these devices can send low power, long range text messages to other devices. Now you might be wondering, why would I even need these things in the first place? Well, I'm gonna give you some use cases to illustrate the exact types of reasons you would use these devices. The first reason is for local emergency communication coordination. And really that's just a fancy way of saying, talking to the people around you, if the cell service is down, if the Wi-Fi is down, but you still wanna be able to send out text messages. Imagine a bunch of people in your hometown have these devices. Every time somebody sends a message, everybody else around the town starts to get the messages that you just sent on the device. But there was no Wi-Fi involved. There was no cell service involved. This is the type of thing that Meshtastic can potentially accomplish. Next, I'll introduce some outdoors and off-grid scenarios. The first one I wanna talk about is for hunting. So this is something that I actually did Last year, I set up a Meshtastic repeater. So this is an advanced Meshtastic device that doesn't actually have a person behind it. It just takes the messages and sends them out without anybody holding the device. With one repeater and three devices, we were able to cover over 100 acres and we could all text without any cell signal or Wi-Fi and we didn't have to use loud radios that could scare off deer. If you need to text in a really rural area, somewhere that you're hunting and there isn't any cell signal, this is a perfect use case. I've used it with great success. Next, let's talk about camping. If you're off the grid and your family is on a camping trip and everybody's dispersed doing different things in your area, but you still wanna be able to message each other, Meshtastic can solve that as well. With a regular walkie-talkie, if you didn't hear the message or if you weren't by your device whenever the message came through, that's it. But with Meshtastic, it's kind of like texting. The device will be there on your phone or on your end user device whenever you are ready to look at it. Another use case would be the concert effect. If you've ever been at a concert or a really crowded venue where if you try to text somebody, the messages don't necessarily go through because there are so many people on one cell tower, Meshtastic can be a backup in that type of situation. Now this is getting into a little bit of that pace planning. And if you've never heard of pace planning before, it's just a doctrine by which people have fallback communication methods. PACE stands for primary, alternate, contingency, and emergency. Basically just means that you make backup plans for your communications. So if you took your cell phone to a concert, but you also took a Meshtastic device, that would be like the beginning of a pace plan. You have your cell phone that you're usually going to use, and it's probably going to work most of the time. But in case anything were to happen, and in case you cannot text somebody that went off to get free pretzels for $80, then you can just use your Mestastic device to text them instead. The last example I want to give is at a much larger scale. With enough organization and enough resources, Mestastic can actually span an entire metropolitan area. Just ask the folks over at Austin Mesh. Austin has a lot of really well-placed infrastructural nodes that act as a backbone for their messaging network. A lot of these repeater devices even have solar panels, which makes them extremely resilient even in time when there isn't power. I have a buddy in Dripping Springs who can message people as far north as Georgetown. Essentially, the entire city of Austin is covered and people are able to send messages dozens of miles. 
The really cool thing about that is that there isn't any company that owns this infrastructure. It's all just owned by private individuals. So there's no company that can flip the switch. And a lot of these devices are powered by batteries and solar panels. So it's not like the grid going down is going to impact it anyways. If a decentralized private communications network is something that appeals to you, then Meshtastic might be for you. So the next question, what do you really get with Meshtastic anyways? It's pretty much just text messaging. There are some caveats there though. You can send direct messages to other individuals, so it's not just all in one broadcast. You can send messages to everybody though, so that's another perk. You can even set up private channels that only specific people have. And yes, they are encrypted. So they're encrypted AES-256. And if you want to look that up, it's actually a very strong encryption. Essentially, what you can do is send messages in an organized manner. And you do all of it through the Meshtastic app or by using a device that has all of the features. You won't be able to scroll TikTok on Meshtastic. You're not going to be able to send voice messages or pictures. So it is limited in that way. I'll give you one more analogy. It's like a walkie-talkie, but for texting, so a walkie-texty. But it has some extra special features that make it a little more powerful than just a walkie-texty. Let's peek under the hood just a little bit to see how it works so you can get a better understanding of why it's special. Meshtastic works with low-power, low-cost hardware. Low-power doesn't necessarily mean low-range or low-capability, though. Some of the hardware can look pretty intimidating if you don't know what you're looking at, though. So sometimes it'll look like just a, a little radio chip with things dangling off of it, like a battery here, an antenna wire there. That type of stuff looks like it's mostly for tinkerers. There are a ton of Meshtastic devices that don't look like that, though. For example, this one right here. This is a Meshtastic device. Or this one. This is a Meshtastic device. This one, this is a solar-powered Meshtastic device that can have a lot of different types of external antennas attached. This one's pretty advanced, but it's also a mesh device. And this one too, this is another Meshtastic device. A lot of these devices look different, but they all pretty much do the same thing. There are a ton of companies that are putting in a lot of effort to make better hardware that encompasses this technology. At the end of the day, there's common hardware in each one of these devices. It's typically one of a few types of radio chips, a power source, a connector, and then a case and an antenna. So developers and manufacturers have come up with a bunch of ways to package these Meshtastic devices. Just like you have a bunch of different types of cell phones. They all pretty much do the same thing, but they're made by different people. Every single one of these devices sends out a special low-power, long-range radio wave that is somewhere between your AM, FM car radio and Wi-Fi. That's a really simple way of breaking it down. So if you already know a lot about radio systems, you'll know that that's, that's pretty simple. Now would be a good time to mention the range of these devices. So it's going to depend on your terrain. It's going to depend on your altitude. It's going to depend on your environment, your antenna. There are a lot of factors that impact your range, but just forget all of that for a second. Generally, these devices are going to transmit in the miles. So think anywhere from, say, like one mile up to 10 miles in really good situations. There are people that have set records by sending messages over 100 miles, but those are really special cases, and those are advanced practitioners. And I'm assuming you're not one of those yet, but you might be soon. Now, although these signals do get really good range for what they are, it comes at a cost, and that is that the messages are going to send kind of slow. If you've configured your device to send really long-range messages, we won't get into the specifics there, that's kind of advanced, but if you have, then the messages are going to send slower the longer range that you have set. And also, it's important to note that these messages can only be about up to 200 characters, so you're not going to be able to text novels. So far, a lot of this stuff might sound pretty basic, but there is one thing that makes it different from a lot of other things, and especially different from typical radios if you're used to using radios, and that is meshing. So I love meshing. I'm going to try not to nerd out too much. I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to give you a scenario that paints a picture of exactly how mesh networking or meshing works. All right, so in this scenario, we've got two mountains and three people, okay? Two mountains three people. We've got a mountain here, a person here, here, and here. So one person, one mountain, somebody here on the other side of the mountain in between the two mountains, and then somebody over here. 
Let's say each one of the people has a mesh-tastic device. If there's a mountain in between each one of them, nobody's going to be able to talk to each other. Now, let's say at the top of each mountain, we put a mesh-tastic repeater. So this is a radio device that doesn't have a person behind it, but that can take the signals that it hears and then it spits them right back out. So something interesting is going to happen if you have a repeater on top of each one of these mountains. Anytime somebody sends a message, any one of those three people, any other person is going to be able to hear that message. Here's how. Let's say the guy all the way over here sends a message. When he sends it, the repeater on top of this mountain is going to hear the message and it's going to repeat it back out. And then the repeater on top of the other mountain is going to hear it and repeat it out again. The person between the two mountains is going to hear those messages, and then the person on the other side of the far mountain will also hear the message. This is a basic concept of mesh networking. The really cool thing about this is that it's really an automated process. With a walkie-talkie, you have to be listening, you'd have to hear the message, and then you would have to repeat the message so that somebody further away than you could hear it. With these devices, they just take the message and immediately spit it back out, depending on the settings. This automated messaging system allows for messages to go a lot further than they would otherwise. So let's say your community has one really good repeater at a really tall place. Your entire community might be able to message each other just because of one well-placed repeater. And that would make a really robust mesh network. Even better, let's say you have a repeater on top of your local water tower, one on top of your local radio tower, and one on a high hill you've got an even more robust network. And again, it's really important to note that you don't really have to do anything with those repeaters. Nobody has to press any buttons. If it has a solar panel and a battery, hell, nobody has to even go visit it. It'll just keep power. It doesn't have to be plugged in. Hopefully that scenario made sense, and hopefully you're starting to see the picture of why this mesh networking is so cool and why it can be really helpful for creating a decentralized messaging network. Let's move on to hardware. So there are a couple different types of devices. There are end user devices, which is really just a device that you have on you as a person. Really, there are two types of end user devices. There's the type that doesn't have any kind of interface. It just connects to your phone and your phone is the interface and it connects via Bluetooth, by the way. And then there are other devices like the one I've already shown you a few times that has a, a keyboard, has a screen, has a trackball. You can even get these with a little antenna mount on top that you can use independently. It doesn't have to connect to a phone. So those are your user devices. And then there are also infrastructure nodes or devices, which really just constitutes repeaters. So they could be solar powered. They could even be plugged in. Repeaters tend to be more advanced and more expensive. They have bigger batteries. They have extra power interfaces. And typically it's harder to get them up to high places and they oftentimes have bigger, more bulky, and more expensive antennas as well. But a lot of these things can be worth it if you know what you're doing. So if you set up a repeater that is solar powered and has the right antenna for the right situation, which is a whole nother discussion, which we'll talk about in another video in this series, then you could have a really awesome setup in your community. Real quick, since I mentioned antennas, I have a friend, his name is Derek. Derek makes really, really good antennas. Kind of like uh, this one here. And not just for Meshtastic, for all sorts of devices, uh, GMRS radios, ham radios, what have you. All sorts of good antennas. So if you want to upgrade your Meshtastic antennas right away, I'm going to put a link in the description so you could go get those antennas. Let's talk price ranges. I've seen some videos on YouTube that assert that you can get into Meshtastic for about $10. I have not been able to make a mesh device for $10, and I have made hundreds of these devices. But a realistic entry price is going to be somewhere closer to $40 after tax and shipping and buying all the extra little things that you're going to need. And that is not going to be a super user-friendly new device. Real talk is that for a feature-filled end-user device that is suitable for a beginner, you're really probably going to spend $70 to $100. So be prepared for that. And that's before you even talk about upgrading, upgrading antennas, which I would argue is an important thing to do, but it's important to be cognizant of what the prices are actually going to look like. Getting started for you, what's the best thing to do? You're going to need two devices for this to work at all. So make sure that you get two of these things to start. 
After that, there are a couple different paths you can take. My favorite path is to just go ahead and get a LilyGo T-Deck Plus. This thing is ready to go out of the box. It has a keyboard, it has a screen. You don't need to attach it to anything. You can connect it to your phone, but you don't have to. It's an all-in-one device. They're gonna be around $100, but in my opinion, it's worth it. If you wanna go a little cheaper, that's fine. I would suggest the LilyGo T Echo or something like this, which is an RAK Wismesh Pocket. And again, remember, you can get two of these things to actually work together. If you're feeling froggy and you wanna go a little more advanced and get a repeater just off the rip, you should get one of the RAK Wismesh solar repeaters. If you're a beginner, get the one that's already pre-made. I did a video on it a while back, so I'll go ahead and link that in the description as well. And you'll see some of the features of that device. It works straight out of the box and all you have to do is hook up an antenna. It's solar powered, so it charges the battery too. The most important part to remember though, is that in order for any of this stuff to work, you have to turn it on. You have to practice with it. You have to actually test it out and see what your range in different areas are. You're gonna have to download the app, the Meshtastic app, which is free. You're gonna have to put it on your phone, you have to connect it, and you'll have to understand how to use your equipment. It's really important that you practice. Practice does not have to be intense. It could be as simple as saying, hey, you up, or test, and making sure that the message gets from one place to another. Thanks for watching, guys. If you want more info, comment below what you want to see next or what questions you had, because we could talk about so many different things in Mishtastic. Stay tuned for part two.